Online Broadcast Network. After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Oh, after Buzz TV. The destination for TV super fans. Producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows. Interviewing celebrities and showrunners. And bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! <laughs> Hello, After Buzzers. We're here doing another After Buzz TV after show for MTV's Eye Candy, Season 1, Episode 2, BRB. I'm your host, Kristen Elizabeth you know Snyder. And joining me, After Buzz TV host, Courtney Tezano. Hello, guys. Woo! And we have <laughs> Brittany Baldy from MTV's The Challenge. Hey, everyone. Yeah. And we have the star of Eye Candy, Victoria Justice. Yeah! Yeah! Hi, After Buzzers. And the showrunner who's bringing us this amazing, sexy, thrilling show, Christian Taylor. Thanks for being Yay! with us. Hello, Christian. <laughs> now, I want to talk about the development of this because it's based on the Arl style Stein uh, Eye Candy book. And I don't mm -hmm. think a lot of people know that. So was this yeah. your idea, Christian? And what was the process sort of developing it? into a series? Well, basically, I was signed on to do the series first. Um, MTV had approached me, and I was actually looking for my next project to do because my Nickelodeon show had wrapped up, and, and I was 21 when I was reading these other scripts. And um, and I and I got the Eye Candy script, and I was obviously excited because I'm a huge R.L. Stein fan. Like, we in the right. 90s, yep. I grew up like, <laughs> watching Goosebumps all the time. I love him. And so that was really cool, and that drew me in. And then as I was reading the script, I just loved, like, how it was, like, fast-paced. Mm -hmm. And, like, I loved how strong my character was. And there was lots of depth. And, like, it was action-packed and sexy and all these great things. So I had a meeting with MTV, and, and I signed on. And I was like, I would love to play Lindy. And then we were lucky enough to have Christian Taylor join <laughs> us, who's an absolute genius and is making this show amazing and is the brains behind mm -hmm. this, this uh, whole thing. So. Yeah, no, it was it was, it was really lovely because I worked on Team Wolf, which was a huge yes. uh, MTV show, and then MTV turned to me and said, you know, would you like to do this? We have Victoria doing it, and and um, they had an, an early draft uh, by Emmy Grimwis, and I had to sort of re sort of rebuild the or build the show from that, and um, we uh, we went straight to series, so it was ten episodes right away doing a pilot at the, at the top of that mm -hmm. and um and it was uh, it was really exciting it was really really good does the series mm -hmm. differ from the book a lot or if we read the book would we be able to know who the killer is in the end it's mm -hmm. very loosely based on the book yeah so yeah. if you read the book which is an awesome book you you would not know who yeah the killer it's, is. it's it's completely different i mean it's, awesome. it's not based on the the, the the result is not the the book and then you know I I put a whole load of new characters into the to the show and That's sort of what open I was ask. yeah open, yeah are like, there different characters yeah, yeah. Well, is that why we can't mm -hmm. tell yeah it's all okay. the, all the characters are basically different I mean there's Ben is in the book uh, mm -hmm. but he was actually killed before the show the the book started uh, or he he died before the show started so Lindy is sort of mourning that the sister doesn't exist in the book mm -hmm. uh, that oh, whole that's interesting. setup that's interesting um, yeah and you know when I got the project I said look we really need to sort of give Lindy some sort of drive and some sort of <clears throat> story that has created made her become this hacker and so the sister was the and I had it was funny mm -hmm. I was sitting at a drive through and I was like what would be a really cool opening and I was like Oh my god! I'm trapped in this drive-through. How do I? How can I get oh, out of here? Wow. And then you know, yeah. and then like you know, six months later, Victoria's clambering over cars in the rain, and, <laughs> you know, doing the most incredible job as an action superstar. <laughs> that was fun. That was I'm fun. so glad that you guys differed so much from the book, though, because I don't want anyone who has read the book to sort of spoil it for us. Sure. And a lot of times that happens. Right. With Game of Thrones and shows like right. that. It's like right. when it's so based on the book, it's like there's no surprises. And the best thing about this show mm -hmm. is that it's so suspenseful and it's like a thriller every week. Yeah. 
And what I really like is we don't know if the killer is one of these guys she's going on a date with or one of her friends that are really close to her. Mm -hmm. Exactly. My predictions last week were so all over the place. Just because because you just, the flirt will have you think that that would be it. And then towards the end, you're like, no, it can't be anyone from the virtual virtual app. It has to be someone like close to her. Like, so I love that you have like no expectations for this. You're just waiting to see what you give us. I Mm. like that. I'm always thinking that you guys are throwing a curveball and it could be one of her jealous friends and Mm -hmm. she's just killing off all the guys that she's going on dates with. But they're just using like a guy's voice as the killer, but it could be a chick. We don't know yet. Yes. Yeah. 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 I could be either or. Either. <laughs> either so, or. so the killer obviously had mommy issues at some point in his life or her life, but um, he wants perfection and he kills anyone who's lying about their flaws. But the mm-hmm. issue here is virtual flaws really don't exist. Mm-hmm. And so he doesn't realize that these people have flaws until he meets them in mm-hmm. person and then you get the bad angle. And this is kind of making right. me feel like, are my bad pictures what I really look like? Yeah. like I love this show. Like it's really mm-hmm. tapping into our fear of online dating for our culture and our generation. And if you've tried it, it's definitely scary and there's always like, you don't know and someone's probably telling you oh mm-hmm. one of your friends are like don't meet them in dark alleys oh, like yeah. we've all we all have the sophia friend mm-hmm. so it's yeah. like the entire show is so relatable but we should probably get down to the episode two and start talking about what happens this episode brb i love that title yeah. <laughs> I, I, it's funny because i wanted to do all the titles to be the little, the, yeah that we would yeah. text each other and stuff like that and so that's now last that. week was a k3u yes is that computer Someone had coding to tell me what K3U you, was. do you know what it is no it's, it's I, I, I love heard, yeah i, I love you. you yeah i heard yeah. you <laughs> Our fans told us that one. So it's, actually, it's a thinking show. You have to think some of these Kay, things. Hey, I don't get it. So, but I was watching one of the bonus episodes and where they talked about what Bay was before anyone oh, else. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know either until I did that that MTV behind the scenes thing. Like I always thought Bay was like shortened for yeah. babe. Like babe, like hey babe. I but, agree. <laughs> like you know, I don't know. Before anyone else, who knew? So Sophia owns the club, right? Yep. She's not just the bartender, and it's mm-hmm. the yeah. IRL club in real life. Did mm-hmm. you do that one too? Yes. I love all these. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so modern, I love that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why the show's so great because it's really commenting on our society and what we're all going through, like right now. You know. Yeah, Definitely. I mean, the, the interesting thing is, like, I grew up in New York because I went to college, and we had a huge club culture then. And, you know, I'm a gay man, and I was coming to my sexuality then. So I'd go to these incredible clubs, and it doesn't exist anymore because everyone's socializing on, on dating. Mm-hmm. And I think the straight club scene is kind of sort of gone too. So it's, I sort of wanted to say, you know, the comment is in real life. This is this is really what happens in real life when you're in a club, you know? And mm-hmm. then, you know, then we have these perceptions of who we are or create these sort of characters of who we are online. So. I actually didn't know that backstory, and that's yeah. really, that's really <laughs> cool. I like that. We that's actually cool. have a caller on the mm-hmm. line. Wow. Uh, caller, what's your name? Where are you from? They're coming. They're, They're coming. coming. Yeah. Hello? Hello? Caller? It's are the you stalker. there? Shh. <laughs> <laughs> it could be the mystery killer. <laughs> mystery guy. Uh, oh, wait. Hello? Hello? What's your name? Where are you from? Hello. Hi. Uh, Bill. Bill? Victoria? Hi, yeah, this is Victoria. Hello? Do you have a question um, for Victoria, a Christian? Yeah, I, I just, I just want to say I love Victoria. The Thank awesome. you. I don't have a question. I just think I think it's Connor. I think Connor's the killer. Oh, Am really? I right? Am I close? Yeah, yeah. Did he say? Connor. He said Connor. Connor's definitely one of the top choices. I a lot know. of people are, are thinking that Con. it's Connor on, yeah. on Twitter and everything, too. Well, you know we can't tell you, so... <laughs> definitely. <laughs> basically... I mean, I think that's a good suspect because he was taking those pictures yeah. in episode two, mm-hmm. tonight's episode, so it was very... We didn't really know why he was doing that. We and he doesn't out. like Lindy. Right. I mean, come on now. Yeah. yeah. Easy suspect. Someone <laughs> hates you. You know what? We don't, any, any easy suspect is, you know, it's too easy. I know. <laughs> I know. That's why I don't, Connor's not my pick. But then. I don't know. Where are you calling from? New Jersey. New Jersey. What was awesome. your favorite part of the episode? 
the whole episode. The, <laughs> the, 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 the Good answer. The car with the bridge. Oh, you liked the it? Guy, the killer took over the car. That was, I love that scene. Oh, awesome. I'm really <laughs> Thank glad. You. you know what? I feel like you're introducing no a fear for our society in the future with cars mm-hmm. manipulate, being manipulated, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's well, that's, some... that's a huge thing about these cars that are going to drive, self-drive, is they really, they can do it now. The problem is they haven't figured out how to stop it from being hacked. You know, mm, so yeah, that's, they've got the could, Google car and everything. Yeah, but Lindy exactly. knows. Lindy knows. Lindy saved the day. Mm. <laughs> that was one of the most complex sequences that we did all season, I think. Definitely. And there's Victoria in the car. Being, there was a stuntman with a mannequin mask on and yeah. like driving and they're driving backwards. And yeah. you know. oh. oh, that's how you did it. There was mm-hmm. a stuntman in stunt the mannequin man. mask. Right. There's that's a stuntman and then there's a there was a mannequin and we were on a track to, uh, on a trailer that we pulled mm-hmm. forward and then pushed back, you know, oh, wow. turned the trailer around. So we did it all different ways, but it was mm. a huge sequence. I want to thank really our was. caller for calling in quickly. Thank you. Yes, and thanks. You, you guys who are watching the live stream, you can call us. We're in Studio C. The number is 424-253-0504. And we'll be taking your calls. And we have some tweets to read later for some right. people asked you guys some questions. Right. Mm. Awesome. So let's talk about this episode. Now, you're Lindy Sampson, and she's like this tech genius. And I know you're coming from uh, Nickelodeon, where you mm-hmm. were last uh, on TV. So, what did you sort of do to prepare for your show? Then the new role. You know, I um, before we actually started filming, I took a class in coding and computer coding, oh, just wow. so I could get an idea of like what my character is so brilliant at and Mm -hmm. um, just kind of get into that mindset and you know just like working creating a backstory for my character and and where she's come from and why she is the person that she is today and um, just really like cultivating like that mindset and and you know all the she's my character Lindy has had a very tragic past in a lot of ways you know she's lost Mm -hmm. her mother and um, in the first episode you see she sees her sister getting abducted before her very eyes which is like you know, losing two of the strongest like female figures in your life is something that really obviously right. would affect someone. So she has like a lot of walls up, um, but at the same time, you know, she's a she's a very strong, passionate, determined young woman. So, so I love that she's such a badass. Yeah, she, she is. is. <laughs> she's I was fun. Gonna, I read before that you said that you liked that this was a challenge for you because you know, not that Nickelodeon wasn't, but you were really put mm. in like a teen role, and now you're kind of becoming of age. Have a birthday coming up, right? <laughs> so, yeah. how did it feel? Like, how what type of challenge would you say eye candy is for you? What type of challenge is eye candy for me? Um, you know, I mean, I feel like it was challenging because. You were the in schedule every was really single intense. Scene. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah, and I mean, it's that's um, huge. Yeah, and we were filming two episodes back. like at back to back at oh, a time. Wow. Um, during was it two episodes in nine days? No, how many days was it? We had six and a half days per episode, so it was uh, what is that? Thirteen days. Thirteen days. <laughs> I can't even remember. Oh, wow. I don't remember. That. Yeah. So yeah. But um, it was it was kind of challenging sometimes to like. You know, know exactly to go from being in one ep- from episode one and then like switching to a different storyline and a different like emotional place to the next scene. Yeah, so yeah, because what we do is we do this thing called cross boarding. So you can kind of get all the locations. Mm-hmm. So you can two episodes are being shot at the same time, but you know Victoria would have to walk. We're doing everything in the cyber unit for those two episodes. So she right, would have wow. to shoot. You know, the more you know, they would switch from scene to scene. So she has to. All our actors do, but. You know, I this is the, the funniest thing for me was like <laughs> I have dinner with Victoria the night the, like a, about a couple of months before we're gonna shoot, and I'm like Victoria, this is gonna be really hard. <laughs> I'm really warning That's you, true. and I'm like you know I you need to do the work. You need to like you know you like you're gonna have to be you're never gonna have done anything like this before, and you know because I was like I have no idea how I'm gonna do it, and I was like and I just it. I have never in my life worked with such a professional actress. Somebody Aww. who's somebody who's so hardworking, you. and you know I've said this before, but it's like not one complaint the entire episode. And wow, what, what we awesome. what we Thank put you. put her through, and um, <laughs> you know the boys complain more about their hair. Than, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was like she really. I mean, she's in every almost every scene. And yeah. it's like that's really hard work, and it's and you have to keep you know keep. And it's also a lot of emotional intensity, Absolutely. too. A lot of emotionally, like, 
just charge scenes and mm -hmm. and my character going through horrifying things yeah. and so that that was challenging as an actor what do you do to get into that mindset not to cut you off but what no, do you do to fine. get into that mindset like my sister just got abducted how do you zone in on that you know i don't know it's sometimes it's just like i like just really getting rid of like all the distractions and sometimes I'll like put on a certain type of music that'll just get me into a certain space and trigger like a certain emotion for me but honestly like it was it was kind of easy to well I shouldn't say easy to film that but I have a younger sister and so when we were filming that on the day mm -hmm. I you know imagining her being abducted right in front of me was like I just had to visualize that and then it was kind of there for me okay. those sorts of things so just being able to I guess have something that you your channel from. Yeah. yeah, we actually have another caller on of the line. Of course, we do. Wow. <laughs> caller, what's your name? Cool. Where are you from? Hello. Hi, caller. What's your name? Where are you Hi. from? Hi. Uh, this is Gracie. I'm from Alabama. Gracie, <laughs> is this Hi. the Gracie that I know and love? Yeah, from it's me. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I love Gracie. Oh, She's amazing. How do you guys know each other? Um, we have to ask now. I'm good. How are you? We're good. I, I know Gracie through Twitter. She's, oh. yeah, she's been an amazing, supportive, kind person. And I've met her, like, at um, different, like, meet and greets. Aww. And I'm just, like, yeah, I've taken the time to, like, meet her and, and, she, and hang out with her. And she's great. She's a sweetheart. Aww. Oh, that's so sweet. Gracie, yeah. did you have a cool. question for Victoria or Christian that you wanted to ask? Um, yeah. Uh, like, because the movie, the show is, like, so suspenseful. Or like any of the scenes, did you get like so into them that it was kind of like creepy to film? Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. Yeah, there were definitely some scenes that were really creepy to film. I'm trying to like I without like giving anything the, away. Yeah, without towards the end. Towards the You're end, it gets <laughs> towards the end, it gets really really creepy, and yeah. I had to do some things that I never situations that I never would have thought I would have been put in as an actor. But it was really interesting and exciting and. Um, I mean, those locations. We <clears throat> in the yeah. last two episodes, we do some big locations. So oh, I think yeah. I mean, oh, we had some really creepy locations at the end. Uh, yeah, yeah, what was it like? An old um, army like yeah, yeah, fort. So, you know, this we can't say where it is in the story, but it's like right. It, there's some great. The great thing about shooting in New York is there's all these great locations. So many amazing yeah, locations. Yeah, so we would be. You know, we do it. There's an episode coming up where it's a haunted ship. That was pretty creepy. Oh, that was. Oh, that was really wow. creepy. creepy. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, there's some really yeah. cool stuff. We were really lucky, and I, 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 I actually talked to the locations people and said, "Give me the locations, and I'll write to those." So we um, we did a little bit of that too. It was really the haunted ship, um, or that episode where we were on that that creepy ship. Uh, it was like late at night, and we had just finished filming like a scene there, and it was so random. I was walking back to my trailer, and it was dark, and we mm -hmm. filmed these creepy scenes, and all of a sudden, like I see something like moving in the shadows, and I was like, "Oh my god, what's happening?" And I, was talking, <laughs> I was like freaking out, and it and I heard like, Meh, and there was a goat. Yeah, there was what? a freaking this like abandoned like shipyard and there were these people that and it wasn't a prank own goats yeah. it wasn't a prank <laughs> and so I went up to the gate and like the go goats started like licking me I was like what is what is my life right wow. now wow <laughs> what is yeah. happening only you Victoria only you <laughs> do you remember the goats I remember that's the goats. very creepy that's so weird <laughs> it's really weird Gracie that was a great question thank you so much for calling in thank you and nice to meet you bye Gracie I'll we see you on Twitter you, we love you <laughs> guys we stream live on AfterBuzzTV.com and you can also download our show on iTunes. Please rate and comment. We love to hear from you guys and you can also catch us on YouTube if you miss the live streaming show. And give us five stars, please. And give us those five <laughs> yes. stars. We'll get more of your favorite characters in here to talk to you. But so let's talk about this episode and the killer starts off by pouring what was that paint stripper <gasps> on the girl's face yeah. i mean i am never going to keep my eyes closed during my spa <laughs> treatment <laughs> ever again, again. Never. thanks a right. lot <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because when we you know when i was talking about this with the writers i you know i one of the things was like what's what's scary in the, in the mundane in our lives like yes. the drive through like going to you know you know, I've had like a couple of facials in my life. I haven't done that much, but I was like, you'd have your eyes closed. Something weird could happen. Right. Yeah. So it's always like things yeah. like that within our show. Where you're so vulnerable yeah. and. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god! Well, See, actually, this makes me more scared to get a facial to go through a drive through. Yeah. <laughs> like you're bringing out some fear in people, I think. But you're doing a good job. Yeah. We're trying. <laughs> well, now someone had an interesting uh, comment online. They were saying that 
perhaps the killer doesn't like when someone's trying to change their natural beauty like the girl was trying to get a facial treatment in tonight's episode so maybe he doesn't like that but we've heard through the episodes that he just doesn't like when he finds them in in person and he sees that they have a flaw but then the, the other thing with that is like some of us don't notice flaws that we see ourselves mm-hmm. so it's I mean, like we have filters we yeah. have different angles so it's really but different even in, in person. person i feel like um i probably know a lot of flaws about myself that i hate that you guys may never even notice my entire mm-hmm. life so yeah. it's like what is this guy exactly looking for like i know it was a crooked tooth and now it's mm-hmm. the acne mm-hmm. and you know is he just picking on like these superficial find, things you're gonna or? find a lot of this out in the next episode and victoria figures it or lindy figures it all out in episode three and it's it's mm. our you know our serial killer is clearly a psychopath and mm-hmm, it's right. the perception of what is beauty what is identity how we present ourselves you know what makes us beautiful what doesn't make us i think you know as a culture we are incredibly obsessed with physical beauty absolutely and you know this is something that is not necessarily a good thing for young people to grow up in and so i i hope that we're commenting on it and victoria was very there was there was a couple of lines in the next episode where uh i don't know if i give give anything away but this is a thing about about perfection and about and victoria was like to me you know took me aside and said look i'm not i want to sort of you know bring this to another level and Mm -hmm. so we wrote to that which was which was i think really important and Mm -hmm. um yeah, so it's all a comment, and yeah. Do we know if the killer, because we were saying before, we were debating whether the killer's attractive or completely <laughs> left field and not attractive. Mm-hmm. I said that he can't be attractive mm-hmm. and that he's looking for things that he lacks mm-hmm. or he or she lacks. Mm-hmm. We don't know. Um, but so, she, Brittany and said, I said that he was really good looking like yeah. a Christian Grey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's so perfect that he needs somebody to match his mm-hmm. perfect mm-hmm. skin. Mm-hmm. So which one is right? <laughs> I can't. We can't tell you. Don't try. And, don't try and trick us. I want to know. I want to know how the killer feels about plastic surgery. Like he doesn't know if these people are fixing themselves. Yeah. And a lot of the is- issues, like me personally, I have some of these flaws, but I want to naturally accept myself. So I work on that, like a lot of people probably do, and not being so self obsessed because it's, it's, it's dangerous. Like yeah, once and also, you- what's a flaw to the psychopath is actually right. what gives us character as an individual. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, so we have to like you know embrace that. I think that's a really good line. It's very I love true, that. Yeah. I had another good line today. No, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, no, I'm not going to say this line. I'll say it next time I come on. <laughs> save it, for us, save it. It's a twist. Oh, that's that's good that yep. you're saving it. <laughs> no, but I'm excited to hear that the next episode is about self-obsession because definitely our entire society is going through that and I have a lot of girlfriends my own age yeah. who are telling me that they are getting plastic surgery mm-hmm. and getting injections and stuff mm-hmm. and it makes me feel like, okay, do I have to start doing this just so I can stay at everybody else's level? So I'm glad that you guys are yeah. attacking that and going to discuss it because it's a right. problem that we all need to reflect on yeah. mm-hmm. like Definitely. now. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't think anyone's happy when they feel like they mm-hmm. have to keep altering things Absolutely. and I think that's Definitely. one of the huge things in our generation we need to find other ways to be happy yeah. and it mm-hmm. doesn't always start with physical beauty yeah. no Absolutely. it comes from it the doesn't, inside I, I mean I'll tell you the, I mean I don't know if I can say this on but the, the people the most attractive people that I've had relationships with let's say <laughs> have been the most insecure mm-hmm. and so you know you just have to sort of like People know they never find happiness in money or in physical beauty. They find it in, you know, self-identification and uh, success in what they love to do and yeah. family and exactly. you know and, and like a, a relationship that you know. So right. that's that's the interesting thing. And I hope, you know, we'll, we talk about a lot of these themes and a lot of this. You know, the show probably should talk about it in the sense of like. And I, and I actually sort of learned this working on Teen Wolf, because Jeff sort of did, mm-hmm. is that the show is sort of its own, the 10 episodes are its own movie in a way. Mm-hmm. So the first three episodes are gonna be kind of mm-hmm. very serial killer centric. So that's all, that's what's going on. And then we begin to sh- sort of shift in and MTV wanted to do this into sort of standalone cases that Lindy will sort of come into. So wow. episode sort of four, five, six. That's really exciting. Four, five, six, and seven 
are all their own sort of stories. And then we kick back into the serial killer. But the serial killer exists throughout all those episodes. Throughout, but he's yeah. not the main focus. He's not the main point. focus. So it's sort of coming in and out and he helps her and there's certain things that happen. Mm. And, mm. and that's how you build a great show. Yeah. A suspense yeah. story, more suspense. Yeah, like yeah. That. So and it, and it'll be interesting to see how people, you know, go with those. And we've right. done some sort of really interesting stories, I think. So I hope, you know, it'll be good. No, I'm, <clears> I'm excited. very excited. And, and you know, MTV, like shows like Teen Wolf, which you came from and, mm-hmm. and now I Candy, which I'm so glad that you're the showrunner of, it's really addressing these more important themes. It's not just like your high school show where yeah. people are singing or in whatever. It's really addressing these themes that we're all dealing with yeah. and are so important to our generation. Yeah, I mean, what what the <clears throat> we can talk about episode four, which is about a group of uh kids who go on a party bus and they all go missing and you don't understand wow. why they were missing but and what Lindy has to do is re create their night through all of their social media postings oh, and there's wow. one I love <laughs> yeah and there's, and there's cool. you know all their, their selfies and their videos and their, their their twitters and all that sort of stuff right and it's she has there's a line where you know uh the head of the cyber unit, Catherine, um, says nobody has, you know, people don't have any idea of how much they reveal to the world online, which is also a huge thing. Huge. And Lindy, you know, Lindy <laughs> has a line back that says, I do, you know, and it's kind of like, <laughs> it's sort of like, it's, it, you know, and so there's that and then some other cool things, which probably shouldn't give away. But. Well, I like yeah. that you mentioned Sergeant Catherine, mm-hmm. and I'm glad that we get that introdu- introduction of yeah. like a new person from the cyber unit and she kind of sees herself in Lindy, and she likes that you're mm-hmm. a bit re- reckless and kind of implementing your own justice on the streets, which I love too. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, and and you're not just this reckless girl who's hooking up with these guys. You spit out the e in the second episode, which right. she doesn't even notice, and you're not sleeping with any of these guys. I don't think you're right. kissing them yet. Right. <laughs> no, I think my character is still mourning the loss of yeah. Mm-hmm. Ben. Yeah, you know that's devastating. But I mean, what's it like romancing possible murderers? That's <laughs> I know that must be creepy. <laughs> It's, um, it's, you know, I, I must say, I feel like we do have some pretty good male eye candy on the show, mm-hmm. so it makes it, it makes it easy. Um, <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, I don't know. It's been, it's, it is creepy a little bit. It's, but, you know, who knows? Who knows who the actual killer is, so. Yeah. Well, in this episode, everyone's sort of pointing the oh, finger sorry. at Reese. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And to tell you the truth, like, he, at first I thought, okay, it could be Tommy. He could be just I locked know. himself in the trunk, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And, Absolutely. And doing that, and, and the one point where he says she's beautiful, there's definitely a romance mm-hmm. cooking there. Yeah. And then, but it right. could be Reese. I mean, he could have very easily switched the camera on himself too. Mm-hmm. What did you guys think? I didn't think it was Reese the entire time for some reason. I'm still <laughs> convinced there's something else. I think it may be Tommy just because, you know, mm. it's, it's so easy for us to get off of the person that she that is, could possibly be falling in love with her, but he could have liked her from the beginning mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. Great point. that was Ben's, one of his best friends. Mm-hmm. He could have been that best friend that was looking like, mm, I really want her. Mm-hmm. So I mm-hmm. think it's Tommy. Mm-hmm. It's just me. Really? I agree with that. <laughs> what do you okay. think, Brittany? Like, who's your suspect right now and why? I don't know. I think it's very hard to determine that right now, but like you said, it could very much, it could be Tommy. I still really don't know. I'm still thinking it could be somebody like Sophia who's jealous of all these guys yeah. that she's going on dates with. Yes. It could be a girl for all I know. Absolutely. I agree with that too. Yeah. Yeah, because girls are cray. I had like girls a girl. Cray. I had a girl in like eighth grade write me notes from a guy who she didn't even know. Like Just she had showed me a picture of him and would like every day bring me a note from him. Oh my god. Yeah, gosh. and, and wow. I, I didn't know until she like went missing that this guy didn't exist. What? Oh, yeah, no. it was insane. So that's why I'm pointing the finger at Sophia too. Okay. I'm on that boat. I'm on yeah. the Tommy yeah. boat that's because I can see how he probably always liked her. Like that's definitely a situation you see today where like there's two best friends that yeah. are both in love with a girl. And he mm-hmm. was trying to get her off the case. Like this entire episode too, he was like, You shouldn't do this. You're messing up what we're trying to do. I mean, do you guys feel like Lindy's messing up what the cops are trying to accomplish? No, I think he just wants to protect her. And I think that comes Mm -hmm. from him really liking her and from someone really liking them, they could possibly kill Mm -hmm. you in this this episode, I think. So Tommy, he has good intentions, but I still think he's a suspect. Okay. What about Jake? Now, Jake shows up, 
somehow has your address. That I thought right. was creepy. And he, I loved how he completely dodged that bullet too. Yes. When you're like, oh, how did you get my address? <laughs> and he's like, oh, I just wanted to make you dinner. And he never even answered how he got the address. <laughs> I mean, it's just what, like, what, right. yeah, what do you guys think of that? Like, he was really creepy with the knife. And then yeah. he made them dinner and was bonding with, his, with her friends and everything. But... Yeah. He could be a suspect. He Creepy. I want to know. Wait, but There's what? a lot of Jake Something. in the next episode. Oh. Okay. oh. There's some um, big well, twists. I want to know, when you guys started filming episode one, did the killer know that they were the killer? I... We knew. You knew, but did you tell the killer? Who? I told the killer sort of halfway through. Yeah, halfway through. Halfway Dang, I was really hoping you'd say he or she. I was waiting ah, for it. He's good. This guy's good. It. <laughs> it. it. <laughs> Christian, what did you do to sort of prepare for taking on this whole new show? I know you did so much work on Teen Wolf, and yeah. that was sort of your life the past few years. Yeah, so what yeah. did you do to prepare? I was, you know, I was really lucky because I had a great experience with Jeff and mm -hmm. working on Teen Wolf, and I had a great training because I'd been on shows like Six Feet Under and Lost and everything. And I think I was sort of ready. And I, I, you know, I'm a director as well, so I sort of can look at it from all sides. And we had Russell Mulcahy he do the first two episodes, who did the pilot of Teen Wolf and has done a lot of great episodes of Teen Wolf. He's a huge part of Teen Wolf. So I had a great sort of... I surrounded myself with a lot of people who were really talented. Mm -hmm. And I knew people who I'd worked with, like Dave Daniel, who's a cinematographer. Brilliant. Um, you, know, we had, you know, he's just a great atmosphere on the set. And then... Um, Todd, who's our second uh, camera operator, so I knew that he would get us great stuff and costume design. You know, you just you surround yourself with great people and you try and be, you know, somebody said it's like being at a circus. You are the ringleader and you have to sort of, and I, you know, I have to say I'm very lucky because not this doesn't happen often. You, I had a fantastic lead actress and I had amazing mm, actors. Thank you. No, but it's, it's really important because mm -hmm, some people very. can make your life living hell mm -hmm. because, and you're like, but we're all in this together. Like, what are you doing? And, um, uh, you know, Victoria's, you know, the co, the, you know, the co head of the show because it's mm -hmm. her, her, she's the lead of the show. So it was really, that's really a lot of, it takes a lot of stuff off and MTV was very supportive and it, you know, it's, 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 it's a huge undertaking. I've never done anything like this in my life before. <laughs> it is, it is absolutely massive. And I was terrified at times that I wouldn't have scripts <laughs> ready. And I was rewriting a weekend and you know, things like that. He was working like a madman. I don't know how, I don't know how you did it. You're amazing because like, he was constantly like, mm -hmm. uh, he, you were on set more for the like the first two episodes, yeah. but you were he was constantly like working on new drafts and and rewriting things and just nonstop like Energizer Bunny. Like, it was amazing. Yeah. Well, it's paying off. Oh, I yeah. love the show, and mm -hmm. we have another caller, Great. so everyone loves the show. Obviously, yeah. Great. caller, what's your name? Where are you from? Hello. Hi, caller. What's your Hi. name? Where are you from? I'm not sure if they can hear us. Can you hear us? Yeah, hi. Hi, what's your name? Where are you from? My name's, De my name's Deborah from New York. Hi, hi Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah, did oh you God. have a, that was Victoria talking to you. Do you have a question oh for you, Victoria or Christian? Um, your hotel. What? Do you remember me from your hotel? <laughs> like, hotel? I don't remember. Did I meet you recently when I was leaving? Yeah, not when you were leaving, but like a couple of days before, like when it was really cold. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't remember specifically, but it's nice to talk to you again. <laughs> Do you have a question for us? <laughs> yeah, so um, where was your favorite place to film this show, actually? <laughs> My favorite place to film this show? Well, we, um, we had, we shot all over New York City mm -hmm. and, um, our soundstage was located in Brooklyn, and it was amazing because we filmed, it was the most beautiful place to go to work. It was right on the water, and we had like the Williamsburg Bridge to our right, and and yeah. it was, you know, I love like the cyber, filming in the cyber crimes unit, like with the, the glass um, windows, and you can see like, New York. The whole city, <laughs> the skyline, it's incredible. So, I mean, I don't know, we filmed in like 
Brooklyn, we filmed in Queens, we filmed in the Bronx, we filmed in Yonkers, we filmed in Manhattan. Yeah, we filmed in everywhere. So many, that's the that's the amazing thing about filming in New York is that we, there were so many beautiful yeah. locations and it's such like, New York City is a character in the show and it's mm -hmm. it's the perfect backdrop and atmosphere for eye candy because it has that creepiness to yeah. it. and But it's also so beautiful and intriguing at the same time. And um, it was just amazing to shoot there. I love that city so much. Well, it looks beautiful. Yeah. And Deborah, thank you. thank you for calling in and asking a question. So I want to talk about some of your friends now. So let's talk about George, who George. is your co-hacker who you wake up in episode two so that he can help you break into security cameras. Yes. He was deep in the REM. <laughs> I love that line. I love that line. He's amazing. And by the he way, is. I think he may be joining us next, next week. Yay. So don't forget to Harvey. tune in, guys. He's hilarious. I love it. You guys are going to have so much fun. Oh. I mean, could he be the killer? Ooh. I have to ask you guys. What do you think? He's got the skills. He's got, he's the, got skills. the skills. I kind, he of, he's, I kind of think I can say he's not the killer. Thank oh. you. I know he's not. I know he's not. <laughs> he could be, he's less the killer than Victoria could be the killer. You know? I mean, I think Victoria you, could have like another personality. <laughs> definitely. Okay, no. no not. Uh, okay, no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've we've exonated George. Let's talk about Sophia. We've already said we think it may be her. And, I mean, she kind of identified you in the club and was like, live with me. <laughs> right. So that's mm -hmm. a little crazy. But I love her character, and she's such a great, caring f best friend. So it's mm -hmm. nice that she, she sort of adopted you to live with her in New York. And you get free drinks yes. all the time. And New York's <laughs> really expensive. So oh, I can yeah. see how that's so convenient. <laughs> and the club. Now, you were talking about this a bit earlier. It's like you walk in. Was it like a flower shop? Yep. Oh, yep. Where'd you get that. the idea for that? That was brilliant. It was funny. It was originally... Uh, originally it was one of those old sort of photo photographic you know portrait studios that you would mm -hmm. go and get your family portrait done and you would go in and you'd have a picture taken and then the booth would revolve and you'd be in the club mm. and then we found this great location that was a flower shop and I just thought that was really fun so I love it's it. um it uh we built this the club on the sound stage because it was much easier to shoot there um and uh, one of the producers had the idea of these sort of um shipping containers and it's mm -hmm. it's it's one of my favorite sets it's really good and we use it yeah. a lot there's one episode where we're entirely in the club and it's very exciting yeah that's a fun um, one Ooh. that's a really fun one yeah and um yeah so it was it was uh it was a cool location and then the junkyard where it's that mm -hmm. an actual junkyard yeah whoa yeah. yes How, what was it like filming there hard it was kind of hard. <laughs> Probably for the lighting, well, we, too. When we arrived, they were, like, moving the cars around. It was, it was like, muddy and oily, and I, I got a pair of shoes that I ruined. Like, the crew oh. members are like, why'd you wear those shoes? And I was like, <laughs> I didn't know it would be this bad. Um, but, yeah, no, and it, it's sort of sexy and dangerous. Like, right. wanted it to be dangerous, and Reese is such a weirdo that it wanted that. And I was going to ask really quick, too. That was actually my favorite part out of the whole episode. Really good. Because I was sitting there watching it with my friend, and he's like, that's such a weird place to go on a first date and as I continued watching it I said you know what I think it's actually a metaphor for social media mm -hmm. and how people are so disposable because he sits there and he's Ooh. like the cars Look are old you. and everybody's disposable and eventually we're all going to be here and I'm like thinking virtual tinder people just sit there and okay yeah. that chick's not hot enough on to the next one mm -hmm. that person's not good enough on to the next one it's and me using my criminology mind because I actually have a degree in sociology oh, yeah, we, 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 that's need, we, the show. To, we, we got a cop on the, the panel room, yeah exactly <laughs> I like it because it's making me think and not many TV shows nowadays do that it kind of reminds me of like a sexy version of CSI cool and that growing up I used to love that TV show cool so props to you guys yeah. I had to say it. I just had to say no, it. No, I love that. I'm so that. glad. No, I'm really no, proud of awesome. that. And, and I kind of got into a little bit, not a huge fight, but a bit of a fight <laughs> with the network because they wanted to cut um, some of the lines in that scene. And I was like, no, these are really important. Like I, I totally really, got yeah, it. Yeah, I worked really hard on this scene with that character talking about it. And so it was it was important. But, you know, they're, they're of course, very supportive and, you know, let me do it ultimately but I'm very happy with that scene it was very really, metaphorical and, you know, Victoria's great in that scene and it's sort of like it's creepy and weird and what's gonna happen what's gonna happen so, mm -hmm. well thank you I like that. We only yeah. have a few moments left what? in this show. It's so, so fun. So I'd like I to get into like an interview with you guys mm -hmm. and sort of talk about um, what specifically from your childhood I know I've asked you before sort of led you to the careers that you are in today. 
Okay, um, what specifically in my childhood? I got started early on. I I think I, I got the bug because my mom is a huge movie buff, and mm -hmm. from a really young age, I was watching, like, all these old movies. <laughs> um, her phone just goes off. Um, but I was, like, my favorite movie when I was, like, 10 was Funny Girl with Barbara Streisand, and, like, Aww. I was a big Audrey Hepburn fan. And, oh, I love her. Um, so I was always just really immersed in like the arts and, and I grew up doing, being in dance classes and, and singing in musical theater. And um, I don't know, and I was just watching a kid on a commercial one day as well. And I, and I remember like yelling for my mom and I was like, mom, mom, do you see that kid? Like, I wanna, I wanna try doing that. And so we like Aww. took some headshots and I, you know, lived in Hollywood, Florida. She took some pictures of me when I was <laughs> eight in front of like a palm tree and sent it to some agencies and, and I ended up booking my first uh, commercial audition which was for Ovaltine Aww. and um, yeah I mean, what a great mom she's, she's so the best mom ever <laughs> she's sitting over there she is, <laughs> <laughs> she is here yeah and um, um, yeah and so to wrap it up here but yeah and so then I, I persuaded my parents to give me a shot and, and go to LA to try and make it in TV and film. And um, I moved out with her when I was 12 and then my, my first big role was on Zoe 101. And um, yeah, that's kind of how it all started. I feel very, very lucky. Yeah, I know it's important to have that supportive team behind you. I know a lot of people say they didn't have the support from their parents and it made all the difference. It took a lot longer to be successful with, because a lot of parents mm -hmm. are like, you know, get the banker's job, get a realistic job, and they mm -hmm. don't really promote the dreams mm -hmm. and then that mm -hmm. kills Not it. Not necessarily the arts, yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what about you, Christian? Um, well, no, what I have to say one thing is like how you would think somebody who had started that young and who had had that much would be a horrible person. <laughs> you think, you think, be great. and she is so, the crew loves her, she's so lovely to everybody. I've never seen her say anything mean or nasty Aww. to anybody, so I just want to say that. Um, I, on the other hand, was going a little crazy That's while we were shooting and probably said some mean <laughs> No, I'm not, no. I'm not a mean person, but you sort of, when you're shooting, you're like, oh my god, uh, why is this not being done the way I thought it was going to be done? Um, <laughs> mm. But, um, uh, how did I, well, I, I, I knew from a very young age that I wanted to direct, mm -hmm. and um, I went to film school in New York, so that was really nice to go back to New York to shoot the show because I hadn't been there in a long time. And I, um, I graduated film school and I got a the my thesis film got nominated for an Oscar. Oh, wow. And then I moved out to New York. Yeah, like, <laughs> can we take a I, moment I, to be like, whoa, <laughs> that's not common. I got, I, got, I got to take my mom to the Oscar. That was the, the, the best. That the is best amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I moved to LA and I didn't work for 10 years. <laughs> Basically, oh. no, it was like, well. it's like, it was a really interesting experience. And I, and I, um, I then sort of had to sort of work my way back up doing different assisting jobs and working on different stuff and then I ended up getting a break in television and, and I've been writing in television for, for a while now and I just, you know, Jeff, we talked about this, gave mm -hmm. me the opportunity to direct on Teen, Teen Wolf which allowed me to then sort of be more of a sort of understanding of the whole process and everything and I, and I love to direct and so I'm doing you know I'm now a showrunner doing a show and it's it's amazing you know it's, it's interesting <laughs> it's a very, you know I, it, it'll it'll be interesting to see where I go next but I do love directing a lot so um, you know, I'd love to do films and all that stuff, but you know, we've got a show to make, so let's see. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully a lot more seasons because yes. we are just fascinated. Yes. <laughs> so yes, can you guys you. share um, a moment on set, a funny time on set? Um, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, <that laughs> thing. You're thinking of one. I'm trying to think of one. I'm trying to think. A funny but, time on set. I mean, or scary, just a memorable well, we generally, time. We generally had a really nice time. Like yeah. everybody was like, there was like, I mean, I think you know, there's f crazy stuff like you know Victoria having the the on the top of the roof, which is on the, st <laughs> the studio, and you know, within the same day, she's making love to Ben. You know, with these beautiful <laughs> lights, and then you know, in the uh, it, it's four hours later he's dead and she's like you know yeah. clasping his body that's the crazy stuff of filmmaking but it's all on one location and yeah. you know, that stuff is and for she wasn't cold then that's what I was gonna ask I mean you're did. from Florida yeah. and LA yeah. like it's so hot here and there so oh my New gosh York. it started getting so cold we, we were yeah. yeah filming some scenes um towards the end there out outside and I was like 
I don't know how I'm gonna do yeah. this. I was <laughs> yeah. like yeah. shaking. It was it was getting really cold. But yeah. um, yeah, I don't know. Other fun times. I, I we even though it's like the, a lot of the show is kind of dark and suspenseful and creepy. Um, we laugh a lot on mm-hmm. set and have a lot of fun. And I feel like super lucky. Um, to be working with such a great cast because mm-hmm. genuinely we all get along so well. And yeah. I love, I'm excited to go to work with everyone every day. And and they're all super down to earth and cool and funny and yeah. just great people. Honestly, the cast and the crew, we had such a good group of people. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying, I'm like totally blanking yeah, on no a specific any funny... crazy thing, I can't think of anything crazy. I think with the the speed was so quick that mm-hmm. we just didn't have time to stop. You didn't have so time to stop. Pranks and things like that we couldn't do. There, couldn't was no time, like, there was I'd no like, Tyler no, Posey like, on set. No, and yeah, you'd like to <laughs> prank, but you'd like to prank people and do something, but it's like, that means we're not gonna get an extra take on that scene. Yeah. You know, this was shot. Yeah, we were very crunchy We had time. a day to two days less an episode that Teen Wolf gets. Wow. You know, so we pulled off some sort of miracles and our budget is less than Teen Wolf. So it's just, you know, I don't know how um, how we really did it. So. Well, let's go ahead and roll into predictions really quick and then we'll give out our Twitter handles. Right. Awesome. And now, you're after Buzz TV. <laughs> <laughs> this is the part where you guys tell us everything that's going to happen next episode. So, <laughs> 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 so what do you guys think is going to happen? What are your predictions go going time. forward? I can't because I'm going to be long-winded. Go ahead, please. Um, <laughs> predictions, I think Lindy's going to start dating somebody very soon. I hope she does because I loved watching that romance with Ben. And I was a yeah. little upset that he died the first episode. I'm not gonna oh, lie. Oh, me too. That was a huge risk too. Yeah. Yeah. He does come back. I'll oh, wait, what? In Afterlife? Yeah. Yeah. Zombie it's not, Ben. It's not, it, we're not doing the Walking Zombie Dead. Ben. Okay. <laughs> no, we do, a fl- we do do a flashback episode which reveals a lot of backstory about Lindy and Ben. Oh, cool. I'm okay. excited yeah. about that. Tony, so that'll be great. Yeah, I mean, I'm still hoping that there's a relationship between Tommy and Lindy. I hope they fall in love. I hope that he is the killer and it's like <laughs> she loves him and it's messed up and crazy. Because like you were saying, like the psychoticness in us is, our that's our flaws. But mm-hmm. it's what gives us character and it's kind of beautiful in a way. Yeah. Yeah. I just I'm so excited for the show. the The power of the internet is real, and I'm mm-hmm. glad that we got a chance to talk to you guys about it. And I hope you come back. We would and love visit to. Us. Yes. You guys are awesome. Thank Yay. you so much for this having. This was a yes. blast. Now, where can everyone follow you? Your Twitter handles. Um, uh, my Twitter handle is at Victoria Justice on Twitter and also on Instagram as well. Awesome. And mine yeah. is, and I'm newly, I'm a new Twitter virgin. Like vir- last twi- week, right? I'm a twi- yes. Twitter virgin. Um, no I am Christian Twit One. Awesome. Yes. And also on him. Instagram, right? Instagram and uh, Twitter. Yes, yeah, the same thing. Awesome. Yes. And Brittany, where can we follow you? I know we can see you on MTV's The Challenge tonight, actually, Woo. at yeah. 10. Yeah. Go, yeah, you guys can check me out tonight on MTV. Um, it's actually at 11 p.m. Oh, cool. 11. Okay. Yeah. They yeah. changed um, it. Redwood Skeletons is on at 10. Gotcha. But you guys can follow me at Brittany Baldi on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Don't stalk me, don't kill me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you do that. I love it. I love it. <laughs> you guys can follow, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Tez Knows. Again, every week we want to hear what you have to say. Mm-hmm. Enter the hashtag ABTV Eye Candy. Your predictions were awesome, and we want to hear more for next week. And guys, I am Cinematic Escape on Twitter and Instagram at Cinematic underscore Escape. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. And we have a special guest, and it's going to be Monday at 11 p.m., right? Yeah. Mm, yes, I at believe 11 so. Yes. We'll be streaming live Monday at 11 oh, cool. p.m. Yes. Awesome. So you'll do it afterwards with Harvey. Afterwards with, with Harvey. Right. Ooh, and then I think it. we'll get the rest of the cast to come on and see you guys. That you would be that? amazing. You guys in. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in, and we'll Bye. catch you next Bye. week. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.